this rosette can cause many different types of symptoms. And because there are so many different types of roses, they don't look exactly the same on every type of rose. And so I'm gonna point out today some of the more uh, obvious symptoms and some of the more common symptoms of rose rosette, but each plant may look a little bit different. It is important to make sure that you correctly identify rose rosette since our management option is going to be plant removal. We don't wanna remove a plant unnecessarily. And if you're ever concerned that you, you just can't make that decision whether it has rose rosette, it's a great idea to consult with your local county extension office. So some of the most obvious and, and one of the first symptoms that people notice for rose rosette is that the plant may have an unusual red color to the foliage. And we don't wanna confuse this because on many roses, they normally have a red color anytime that they are growing new leaves and shoots. So when they are showing this flush of new growth, it often has that red pigment. The difference with rose rosette is that the red pigment just doesn't fade out, or you may notice that it remains sort of mottled, sort of a red green and sometimes even yellow. Some other features that we wanna look for, focusing on shoots that are red, is that often the leaves are slightly distorted. Rather than having the typical oval shape to the leaf, you'll notice that the leaves may look sort of thinner than normal or stunted. Sometimes they're what we might call strappy because they're so thin and narrow. The leaves are often distorted, they're rumpled, whereas a healthy rose leaf is smoother. And another feature is that on these shoots, you may see that they are more succulent. And what that means is a normal rose plant, the mother shoot is, is going to have a thicker diameter than the side shoots. So the mama is gonna be bigger than the baby shoots. We usually see the opposite thing with rose rosette. Those side shoots have a thicker diameter and they also may have extra thorns or prickles. And it's important to compare different parts of the plant because every rose has a different number of thorns or prickles. It's somewhat determined for, by the environment, so it may be different from year to year. So on any given rose plant, you may have healthy areas as well as more damaged areas. And so if you compare those healthy areas with the damaged areas, you get an idea of what the normal number of prickles is. And so if you're seeing a lot of those thorns, that's one great indicator of rose rosette. Another key symptoms is the actual rosette or witch's brooming. So most plants will have where their leaves come out are nodes and the nodes are regularly spaced. When rose rosette is present, we find that those nodes get closer and closer together. So they're almost on top of each other, shrunken down. And you have many, many shoots and leaves coming out at the same point. And that's the actual rosette or witch's brooming that rose rosette gets its name for. Other symptoms that we might see is that those heavy, those rose rosetted shoots are heavy. So sometimes they sag on the plant. They may actually fall and, and be observed on lower parts of the plant. And over time, you're gonna notice that there is dieback and decline. Rose rosette interferes with how that plant is making food in photosynthesis. And as a result, the plant starts to starve. And so over a series of time, you'll start to notice more and more dead shoots and dieback on that plant. There are other diseases that can cause that, such as rose cankers. So it is important to rule those out. So rose rosette, if you can find three or four symptoms that I've mentioned, that's a good way uh, to assess that it does have rose rosette disease. But sometimes the disease can be confused with other problems. The most common problem that it's confused with is chemical injury. So if chemicals have been used in the area, it's particularly herbicides, then you want to rule those out. And one difference is that generally with chemical injury, we may see a lot of the 
symptoms I've mentioned, the unusual shape to the leaves, unusual color, uh, distortion and stunting, but we don't usually find the production of excess thorns. So if that's absent, it might suggest that chemical injury is to blame rather than rose rosette. So if you're looking for more information, you're always welcome to visit the roserosette.org website or look to your local county extension offices for information that is specific to your state or region.